try to answer these questions yourself first. Are these electrolytic or galvanic cells? Let's quickly revise the main differences between electrolytic and galvanic cells. Galvanic cells are also called voltaic cells. In an electrolytic cell, a potential difference is set up by a power source, for example a battery, that forces a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. So an electrolytic cell converts electrical energy to chemical energy. In contrast, a galvanic or voltaic cell consists of chemicals which react spontaneously. As they react, they create a potential difference between the electrodes. So in a galvanic or voltaic cell, chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. We can see that this circuit has a battery. Therefore, we know that electrical energy is being converted to chemical energy as the battery forces a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to take place. Now we're asked which electrode will increase in mass. The electrolyte is copper chloride solution. Copper chloride solution is formed when solid copper chloride dissolves in water. Solid copper chloride is a giant ionic molecule consisting of positively charged copper ions, Cu2+, and negatively charged chloride ions, Cl-, and these Cu2 plus and Cl minus ions are held by ionic bonds in a crystal lattice. When this dissolves, water dismantles, water pulls apart the crystal and water surrounds each ion. And now the ions are free to move because they're no longer held rigidly in place by ionic bonds in the crystal lattice. That's why a copper chloride solution can conduct electricity so it can serve as an electrolyte. The battery charges the carbon electrode. The electrode connected to the battery's positive terminal becomes positively charged and the electrode connected to the battery's negative terminal becomes negatively charged. The copper ions and chloride ions in the copper chloride solution complete the electric circuit by moving to the electrodes. The negative chloride ions are attracted to the positive electrode and the positive copper ions are attracted to the negative electrode. When the ions reach the electrodes, they undergo chemical reactions. Now imagine the two chloride ions move to the positive electrode. When they get there, the positive electrode strips each one of the electron which is giving it its negative charge. And that changes the chloride ion, the Cl- ion, to a neutral Cl chlorine atom. And this neutral chlorine atom, Cl, is unstable because it no longer has a noble gas electron configuration. So these two chlorine atoms then bond covalently with one another to form a diatomic Cl2 chlorine molecule. Now in this picture we can only see two chloride ions losing electrons to form one molecule of Cl2. But actually, many millions of ions will do that, forming many millions of chlorine molecules. And all these chlorine molecules form bubbles around the positive electrode because chlorine is a gas at room temperature. The positive terminal of the battery sucks the electrons which came from the chloride ions from the positive electrode into the battery. The negative terminal of the battery then pumps these electrons to the negative electrode. And there, the copper 2 plus, Cu2 plus ions are forced to accept those electrons. And that changes the Cu2 plus ions into neutral Cu atoms. And those neutral Cu atoms precipitate. They come out of solution because they're solid and they precipitate on the negative electrode. And it's that copper which increases the mass of the electrode on which it's deposited. And we can see that that's happening at the negative electrode. So that's an overview of what's happening in this electrolytic cell. Now let's analyze the redox reaction that's happening in greater detail. Let's find copper and its ion on the table of standard reduction potentials. Since this is a reversible reaction, it is possible for the reaction to occur in either direction. So 
soluble copper ions could gain electrons to become copper atoms, or copper atoms could lose electrons to form soluble copper ions. Since we asked about an increase in mass, this must be the half reaction which is relevant for this question. Soluble copper ions come out of solution as they gain electrons to change into solid copper atoms. What kind of half reaction is this? We can see that Cu2 plus has gained electrons. What do we call such a process? How has its oxidation number changed? Copper ions have a charge of 2 plus, so they have an oxidation number of plus 2. Copper atoms are neutral, so they have an oxidation number of 0. So that means that the oxidation number has dropped from plus 2 down to 0. We know that a loss of electrons and a rise in oxidation number is called oxidation. And that always happens at the anode. We also know that a gain of electrons and a drop in oxidation number is called reduction. And that always happens at the cathode. In an electrolytic cell, the anode is positively charged and the cathode is negative. Which of these is relevant to the half reaction which deposits mass on an electrode? Since this reaction involves a gain of electrons and a drop in oxidation number, it's the reduction half reaction, which happens at the cathode, which is negative in an electrolytic cell. So the copper cations are reduced at the negative cathode. This is the half reaction relevant to this question about mass increase. On the other side though, also remember that the chloride ions are oxidized at the positive anode. Q and T are the negative cathodes in this question. So they are the electrodes which will increase in mass. Now we asked the name and formula of the products formed at P and R. Notice that both of these are the positive electrodes. So they are the anodes because this is an electrolytic cell. The difference between them, the difference between P and R is that P is made of carbon and R is made of copper. Up to now we've been discussing the copper chloride electrolytic cell which has carbon electrodes. So we've been discussing this electrolytic cell and remember that we said that chloride ions are oxidized at the positive anode. So we already know the answer for P. Chlorine gas, Cl2, will form here. Let's look at this in more detail and also examine what's happening at R. As we've already discussed, in an electrolytic cell, the positive terminal is the anode where oxidation occurs. In other words, electrons are lost and oxidation number rises. So this is what is happening at P and R. But the big difference between P and R is that carbon is in Inert. Inert means it does not react. Because it's an electrical conductor, it conducts electricity allowing reactions to occur, but it doesn't actually participate in the reaction. On the other hand, copper is reactive. So R will participate in the reaction. How will it participate here at the anode where oxidation occurs? This is how copper is oxidized. Solid copper loses electrons to become aqueous copper ions. Notice how the oxidation number of copper rises from 0 in Cu to 2 plus in Cu2 plus aqueous. So we see that copper ions form at electrode R. What do you deduce from this about how the mass of R will change over time and how the concentration of the electrolyte around R will change. Can you see that R is going to decrease in mass? It's going to be corroded as solid copper is oxidized and so goes into solution. That's going to increase the concentration of the copper chloride solution as there are more Cu2 plus ions. How will we use such a cell? We use it when we have some impure copper which we want to refine. We want to purify this impure copper. So we connect the impure copper rod to the positive terminal of the battery and then only the copper in the rod, not the impurities, only the copper, will undergo this reaction going into solution. The impurities will stay behind. Then remember the negative cathode. Those ions are then turned back into copper metal, into Cu, and then they deposit it. So in that way we get the pure copper from R and deposit it onto T. 
Meanwhile, let's remind ourselves what's happening at P. Since P is inert, it cannot react. So it must be the ions in the solution around P which are going to react. They're both copper ions and chloride ions surrounding P. We already know that it's the chloride ions that are going to react. We also know that P is the anode where oxidation occurs. We find chloride and chlorine near the bottom of this standard reduction potential table. We must read the reaction backward for the oxidation half reaction. Notice that chloride ions lose electrons to become chlorine molecules. Notice how the oxidation number changes from minus 1 to 0, so it rises, which further shows us that this is an oxidation half reaction. So as we discussed before, chlorine gas forms at electrode P. So here we have the answers. Now we need to explain our answer to question 1.3.2. Basically, this is asking why doesn't chlorine also form at R? Because after all, electrode R is also surrounded by chloride ions. So why shouldn't those chloride ions be oxidized to chlorine at R? To answer this, we need to remind ourselves of the meaning of the term reducing agent. A reducing agent is a chemical which makes another chemical to be reduced. To reduce another chemical, it must itself be oxidized. So the chemical which is oxidized is the reducing agent. There are two possible reducing agents here. In other words, two chemicals which possibly could be oxidized, chloride or copper. So which one will be oxidized? the one that's stronger. In other words, the stronger reducing agent. How do we see which one this is? We look at the table of standard reduction potentials. On this particular table, reducing strength increases upward on the right-hand side of the table. Here we have copper and here we have chloride. We see that copper is higher than chloride, which tells us it is a stronger reducing agent. It loses electrons more easily than chloride. So it will win and it will be the reducing agent in this case. In other words, the chloride ion will not be able to be oxidized at R because the stronger reducing agent copper will rather be oxidized at the anode R.